Hey, what's up, y'all? Marjack79 here. We well, are back again today for a bit of a different video. So, be careful for spoilers here for Spider Man No Way Home. But I've been racking my brain here for the past few days about this question that's been stirring around in my mental. And I figured, why not? Let's go in and let's make a video about it. So, in Captain America 3 Civil War, Spider Man makes his first appearance and he has a little scuffle with Steve Rogers, Captain America. And in this battle, it is pretty clear that he is really no match for Steve Rogers. I mean, he's basically kind of toying with him, not really trying to hurt Peter as he fully realizes that it's just a kid that does not at all whatsoever have a full grasp of the situation of what's going on within the storyline of that movie. So my question is, we know that Peter was still really getting used to his powers in this movie. He wasn't really fully understanding what he was capable of. Once we definitely take it back to the scene in Spider-Man Homecoming, when he got trapped underneath all of the rubble caused by the vulture and i believe that it was here within the mcu storyline at least is when peter fully realized uh, the capabilities of his strength and he was pushed to his absolute limit strength wise to force himself to be able to get out of a life or death situation it was a beautiful scene by the way and of course we can also take it back to the classic scene where spider-man back on his first appearance in civil war literally caught the punch of the Winter Soldier's metal arm like it was absolutely nothing. Even caught it and made a joke and saying that, holy crap, dude, you have a metal arm. That's so cool. Basically kind of demonstrating the power of Spider-Man and what he is truly capable of and letting us know that Peter Parker as Spider-Man pulls his punches on a regular basis when he's fighting regular humans. It seems pretty early on and when he realized the full potential of his powers that he knew that he would have to hold some of it back or risk accidentally killing somebody. And then of course we all know that the core responsibility of Spider-Man that's one of his major personality traits is that he does not kill unless he's absolutely forced to. So that brings me to the main question that I have for this video. Does the Spider-Man that we see by the end of No Way Home after he has dealt with the untimely death of Aunt May, after he has received the great power, great responsibility speech from Aunt May since his battle with his most vicious nemesis, the Green Goblin, who is able to match him blow for blow, matches him power for power. He was able to take him down. Does this Spider-Man have what it takes to take down Captain America? Or more so, is the question, can Steve Rogers take down this fully matured Spider-Man? This is a Spider-Man that is completely different, in my opinion, from the Spider-Man that first appeared in Captain America Civil War. He is fully matured. He has been through trials and tribulations. I feel like he is fully capable of understanding the full grasp of his power, which is something that he clearly did not have in Spider-Man Civil War. The character development of Tom Holland's Spider-Man from Civil War to Spider-Man No Way Home is nothing short of a mastered class of character building that we rarely see in such a long string of movies and I'm so grateful for that. Where with Captain America, it seemed that he reached his peak as soon as he got the super soldier serum. There really wasn't any character development, at least with a power building wise when it came to the capabilities of Captain America. He was always Steve Rogers. It's like he always had what was necessary to get the job done after receiving the super soldier serum. So what we have here is just a few of Captain America's feats of what he's capable of. I know you'll see right there that he's actually defeated Spider-Man in a battle before. But like I said, is that a fully matured Spider-Man or is this 15, 16 year old Spider-Man that's still understanding his powers. I want him to see the results 
of an 18 grown Spider-Man that's been Spider-Man for more than five or six years. I want to see him take on that Spider-Man and see what the results of that battle would be. Now, we absolutely cannot underestimate Captain America by any stretch of the imagination. I think Cap's most powerful feat, if we take it back to Captain America, the Winter Soldier, is when Bucky was trying to get away from him and he was able to grab the helicopter that was lifting off of, of the ground and hold it in place. That is nothing short of absolutely incredible and obviously would be completely impossible for a normal human being. Only someone with super soldier serum or superhuman capabilities would be able to manage a feat like that. But when we compare that to the capabilities of Spider-Man, would this be something hard for Spider-Man to do? Or would just holding a helicopter in place, would that be child's play? for Peter Parker's Spider-Man. So now let's take a look at some of the capabilities of Spider-Man, of some of the feats that we've seen in the comic books. Throws Punisher, several hundred feet in the air. Holy crap. Bends and breaks steel bars with a single hand. Okay. Smashes one inch thick a steel door. Yep, we've seen that before. We actually seen that in the battle with Green Goblin in No Way Home. Rips apart Doc Ock's titanium arms. Holy moly. <laughs> Holds down and shakes a helicopter. Huh, how about that? Same thing that Captain America did, even though he didn't even shake it. He was just trying to hold it in place. Catches an armored car. Yep. If you've played any of the Spider-Man games on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, we see Peter Parker and Miles Morales catch cars like they're footballs. <laughs> and then that takes us to my most favorite feat out of any Spider-Man out of the three that we see get represented in No Way Home. The train scene when Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker literally stops a freight train from plunging into a river below caused by the destruction of Doc Ock. This feat alone solidifies me thinking that he is one of the most powerful comic book characters in existence. And we can take this feat and throw it into the final battle in No Way Home with Green Goblin, where Tom was literally able to push Tobey Maguire to one knee as he was trying to stop him from plowing the glider into the laughing, shrieking Green Goblin. And then if we want to take a Tom Holland's most powerful feat back in Homecoming when he was able to keep the yacht from separating, even though it was partially his fault alongside Mysterio, but he he was able to shoot webs into multiple different factions of the yard, utilizing geometry to keep us from separating through sheer willpower and strength. If I want to keep it all the way truthful with y'all, my new favorite feat of strength from Tom Holland's Spider-Man is no doubt him overpowering the Green Goblin in Spider-Man No Way Home. The feat of strength, fighting capability, power, and willpower in this battle was nothing short of legendary, and it easily made my top five final superhero battles of all time. The sheer power from Peter's punches in this fight was just magnificent. Even the acting capability from William Defoe is on full display here. There was one kidney shot that Peter gave the goblin that made him yelp in pain like, holy crap, you know you felt that punch was so good and then the final power driver into the array fist of fury punches that he gave him to finish out the battle to take him down was just magnificent in saying all of that i am fully aware that the green goblin is not freaking Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers is a legendary figure in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Marvel Universe in general for major reasons. He has taken down some of the strongest opponents, some of the strongest allies with his sheer willpower and fighting capability as well. As we all know, he is a master martial artist with multiple black belts and master craft a fighting capability that he has been able to combine into his own fighting style that not many people can even compete with. So really, in my opinion, it comes down to the strength of Spider-Man versus the experience of Captain America. I'll even take another step forward. I think 
the determination of the outcome of the battle will really come down to the power of the vibranium shield versus a Spider-Man's webbing capability. If Steve is able to get a decent shot on Peter's head with the shield, I think he would win the battle, but it would take some wearing down of Spider-Man, because don't forget, Peter has the spider sense now, so it would really take some wearing down, and fatigue hopefully would set in for Peter, probably before it would set in for Cat, because he's got the super soldier serum that allows him to basically fight forever. So, I think if maybe he was able to wear Peter down and get a good shot to the head with the shield, he would be able to knock him out. But, if Peter was bloodlusted and he was very angry fighting Cap like he was against the Goblin, there's no telling what would happen. Because it's not like Cap hasn't had experience with fighting more powerful opponents before, aka Ultron, aka Thanos. He was able to hold his own against the both of them. Now, the ultimate outcomes of those battles, if he was by himself, I think he would have eventually lost. But with Spider-Man, it's a little bit different because Spider-Man is not more powerful than Ultron or Thanos by himself. Hence why this battle is so much more even than one would give it credit for. Like I've seen a lot of theories where some people don't really think Cap has a chance to, to take down the Spider-Man. And I've seen a lot of theories where I've seen that people don't really give Spider-Man a chance to take down Cap which is why I really wanted to give my opinion out on this matter. If I had to take an educated guess, I think I would go for Peter if he was bloodlusted or if he had just lost somebody. I think that he definitely be easily becomes one of the most powerful you know, characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe when he is angry with somebody. But if it's just playful Peter and not really taking it serious, then I would go cap all the way. And with that, we will end this discussion here. So obviously what I want to know now is your opinion, your thoughts, your concerns. Do you think I'm crazy for all of my bullet points that I've pointed out? I just want a simple comment, Spider-Man or Captain America. Please post it in the comments below. And when I get the results of this comment section, I will post it the next time I do a Marvel video. I'm actually super freaking excited, man, because I really do not know the results of what y'all are going to say. Like, I went into this baffled on who I was going to choose myself, and I really didn't even pick one. It just depends on the circumstances of the battle. So that's why I am so interested in y'all opinion on this as well. So please comment please have a positive opinion i just want to know man and yeah, we'll leave it at that so if you like the video do me a favor hit that like button you know what to do you can hit that subscribe button follow me at youtube.com slash martinjack79 i'm also on facebook instagram and tiktok hit the notification bell icon this video right here gets a lot of success then i will try to do more versus battles like this this is something new for me that i wanted to try out so let me know how y'all feel about it man so all righty as always i will see you guys on the next one I'll catch you guys later bye Avengers! Assemble.